That's a fat bag of swag, kid. Hey guys, Matt Lanfair here with Primary and Secondary. Carl from InRange TV. I'm Ugin Dashley. Yes, and we are here together. This is like a super team, or I don't even know. In this momentous it's some kind moment. Of something. Yeah, it's something. something going on. There's a something, something going on, there's no some doubt about that. Some yeah. kind of stuff. So we've got some cool guns, though. Yeah, we're going to do some shooting. Well, actually, we're not going to do any shooting. What? We hired someone for that. Someone who can tease Oh. Them. Yes, this is right. I am an expert. At the T-Zone. At the T-Zone. T-Zone. will expert your way to the target. I, I've never seen your T-Zone with lasers. Ah, uh, shit. <laughs> Whoa. Huh? My friend. <laughs> talking about shot, lopping off heads left and right. Just nice. Wow. Yep. So what we've got here today is we've got my Watwood Stoner D rifle, which is yep. that 14.5 inch gun. And then I've got an M27 IAR, which yep. is a semi-automatic variant of the new Marine Corps rifle. Yep. Both of them have Zenico uh, laser units on it. They're Russian lasers. And the reason they're lush, Russian lasers is because they're not restricted by FCC regulations. Well, they don't appear to be at least because, yep. boy, they go really, really far away. And they're probably going to be burning through the targets that we're aiming at. Yeah, or I should say Dugan is aiming are at. We pushing a good, I think we're pushing a good five to six watts on the laser power. You, you don't even have to actually pull the trigger. You just put the laser on the target, wait long yep. enough, and it just actually catches on fire. The cool thing is that you can actually uh, engage targets beyond the atmosphere with this. So like satellites, yeah. no problem. I mean, you can hit uh, GLONASS satellites, do, uh, Baidu satellites, uh, uh, GPS, all that stuff. Just knock it right out of the sky. It's really fun. Actually, you remember Reagan's um, you know, Star Wars system? Which yep. is supposed to be against anti, into, you know, intercontinental ballistic missiles. Uh, I think Zenitco actually stole the plans for that. We never actually deployed Star Wars, and yep. I think that they actually implemented them as weapon mounted lasers. So these are basically Death Star lasers. Pretty much. Wow. Yeah. So, anyways, they're bright enough to go 100 yards in even this dusk condition. So, yep. what we're going to do is we're going to shoot the target, yep. and then what? Well, from there, we're going to we're gonna make sure everything's on uh, zeroed. So, that's kind of important. Yep. From there, Dugan is going to put a little pressure on that rail. Uh, he's gonna. He's really gonna put a lot of. Uh, it's gonna be under pressure. Well, that too. He's he's gonna load it up. Under pressure. We're hoping that we're gonna see some kind of variance with where the lasers dropping or where the lasers hitting, and then from there we're gonna we're gonna measure the the def what would it be deflection? Yeah, what, yeah. yeah it's I mean, laser deflection. It, yeah. it's no different than well, like like for example, if you take your barrel and rest it on a barricade, yep. you actually deflect your zero because yeah. you're pushing the barrel off kilter. The same thing could apply with a free float tube. Now, we've, yep. the reason we're using these two guns is because one of them is a carbon fiber free float tube, yep. which theoretically should be the one that has the most flex. Yeah. And then the um, HK part is made for being run over by tanks. So that one should not flex at all. Yeah. So those are really the extreme ends of this. So what I'm curious about yep. is if we actually see the laser shifting. Yep. And another thing to consider, if we do see this flex with the lasers, or excuse me, with the, with the hand guards, what is this also going to be doing to your iron sights if they're attached to the rail? So this is going to be fun. Mm -hmm. Cool. So we'll get over there. Let's get some shots downrange, awesome. and let's see if we've got a zero. Imagine what it's going to do to your group when you uh, deflect downward from pressure, and then you're just doing all crotch shots to the enemy. Nothing but crotch, because the barrel's going to go yeah. down. Well, down that's down. a force multiplier, though, isn't it? I, I think mean, so. crotch shots are frequently a plus. Oh, you're so. using 5.56. Five, Incredibly demoralizing. It yeah. is a demoralizing thing, yeah. It, you know, it's like it goes back into that whole thing about 5.56 five, being used to wound instead of kill. Exactly. Yeah. It brings yeah. to mind, it's like, a, it's like when you nuke a hot dog in a microwave too long, and they're just kind of like... Yeah. And then you get that particular... Well, you know, it, thinking about that also, if we're if we're doing that to the enemy, that means they're not going to procreate. It's true. So there's going to be less people to fight in the future. And you're granting life, which is really, you know, amazing. It mm -hmm. is. Yeah. All right. Let's cool. go get some rounds down. Okay, here we are at 100 yards. Dugan's going to do a shot, basically to confirm our zero. It's going to be a three-shot group. After he shoots this gun, he's going to shoot the other one. Then we're going to walk down to the targets and, and see what it looks like to document that. So, take it away. That's going to be awesome. So good. My laser being on. All right, three shot group on the right. Dugan used the laser as his aiming device for all rounds fired in this video. He also used the same point of aim for both targets. Okay, Dugan was shooting at 100 yards, shooting the HK. Here's the group right here. So we're figuring the zero is somewhere around this area. Probably somewhere in this region. Not so this much region, here right or here. here. Here-ish. Yeah. There. 
We were supposed to shoot there. So what was going through your mind when you broke the shots? Oh, uh, man. I ordered a, uh, a waterbed off eBay and I lost my password and I called them up and they won't, uh, the password is just too co too complicated for me to remember. Yeah. And so they, uh, they run their customer support at a third world country. So it's like Trans oh, yeah. Transylvania or something like that. Mm -hmm. It's the lady, where the lady was that I was talking to about it. And uh, I mean, it's just a big fiasco. I couldn't, uh, it's really like the uh, experience is degrading over the year, every year. Anything about the shot process? Yeah, oh, well, I just, I mean, I was trying to hold it steady on the target, you know, on the zero, on the X, steady as I could. I mean, that's about as, about as good as, I, I'd like it to be a little better, but. Did you get the password, though? Yeah, no, I fixed all that. Okay, cool. Next, we will continue shooting. So Dugan's not going to be zeroing the what would Stoner do rifle at 100 yards. It's going to be a good time. Super good. So great. Oh, I just lost my laser beam. Alright. Um, we're gonna have to go prone. Oh yeah. Alright, we ready? Okay, so Dugan just zeroed, or at least confirmed the zero, mm -hmm. at 100 yards with what would Stoner do. And this is where all three rounds landed. Pretty good group. What was going through your mind as Matt, you pressed the trigger? This is all magicals. Just all magicals. Uh, skill. Made skill, I think. Maybe. Yeah. So next up, we're going to be putting a little bit of pressure on that uh, on the handguard, and then see where that moves, where that moves the laser versus the point of impact. I think we're going to expand this target base yep. just to accumulate any uh, like movement upward so that we can track the potential deflection. Good times. Mm -hmm. Great oldies. So Dugan's at 100 yards. Still, he's loading that bipod. He's putting pressure on this handguard. We're going to see what kind of deflection is going to come out of this, out of this pressure. I can tell you right now it's going to be interesting. Yeah. All also, right. we, we've expanded the, the target area a bit. The zero of the laser is not necessarily zeroed to the optic, but we know if he's aiming somewhere where the laser is going to be hitting. Yeah, I'm, using, I'm using the optic to look and uh, precisely place the laser in the same aiming point yep. while applying pressure, if, if you're tracking. I am. I'm not. I don't okay. Know. No. So he's going to shoot. I'm going to stand over there. All right, we ready to go? Yep. All right, here we go. Pressure applied, uh, and we're discharging. Discharge. All right, here we go. Optic on, and deflection. Applied. Applied. Have a little slide. All right, that looked good. Okay, so I think we've pretty much concluded this experiment. Definitely. It was a cool experiment. I don't see many people trying out this kind of stuff. Essentially what we found is with these groups of three, everything's gone up. And that's to be expected, you know, from physics and stuff. Science. Science. Yeah. So we have the IAR, Let's see here, the group was over here. Yeah, right there, if you can see that. So there's two rounds there, and we have a third one down here, and that variation is probably just variable pressure applied by hand in it's, the bipod. So we're thinking pretty much that much variation? Yeah, I'd say so. And so then compare Six. it to the what would Stoner do weapon. This was the first group here. This is the second group, which also moved right. And yeah. that's a very close... It's pretty similar. I mean, you're... Surprisingly, for how sturdy that handguard is on the uh, 
IAR. This yes. Is and that's a full simple. rail. That's not a, any light and key mod or anything. Right, right. Compared to carbon fiber. Yep. You know. And uh, the interesting thing is the uh, lateral deflection on the carbon fiber, and that's probably, I mean, you definitely perceived as the shooter a difference in the, in the uh, whatever you call it, the feel of the flex, yep. you know, when yep. you're loading it. And that probably accounts for that offset that, uh, lateral shift. So this also is going to work with your irons. So if you have irons on your free float, guess what? Same thing's going to happen when you load your bipod. When you go up to a fixed position and you're and you're putting any pressure on the handguard, you're going to be it's gonna causing some, down yeah. Range. There's going to be deflection. Just like using a red dot, there's if anything with has anything that has a lens has some kind of parallax. Know your weapons. Know your stuff. Try it out. This is the way to know your stuff. Yeah, go shoot. Go train. Practice. She's on hard. She's in hard. Pull the bullets in your gun. Put the right. Put the right bullets in your gun, not the wrong ones. Or that. For safety. Don't shoot a bad, a bad boy.